Mr. President, uh, I rise in strong support of the DRIVE Act. I want to commend Chairman Inhofe and Ranking Member Boxer for their bipartisan work on this bill that passed out of the Environment and Public Works Committee with a unanimous vote, including mine. A long-term highway solution like the DRIVE Act will provide our states with the certainty they need to advance major road and bridge projects. Passing a six-year bill would be a great achievement for this Congress, especially in the context of our recent history, and I am hopeful that we will seize this opportunity. Several years ago, as a member of the House Transportation Committee, I strongly supported the last long-term highway bill that helped support major roads in West Virginia and around the country. The 2005 highway bill was extended 10 separate times, 10 times, between 2009 and 2012. During that period, states were only assured federal funding for a period of weeks or months, making lasting improvements of our highway infrastructure difficult. And it shows. As we saw between 2009 and 2012, several short-term extensions result in fewer and more costly fixes. In 2012, we passed MAP 21 to reauthorize the highway program for two years. I served as a conferee on that legislation. MAP 21 was a strong bipartisan achievement that included a number of important reforms to streamline project delivery and help states complete their projects more efficiently and economically. But ultimately, MAP 21 was a two-year bill. Since MAP 21, we've had more of the same, short-term extension after short-term extension. The recent history shows just how significant this opportunity we have is. We have before us a bipartisan, fiscally responsible bill that will provide the certainty our states need to improve the nation's highway system for several years. I am encouraged by the bipartisan vote that we saw last night to move to debate, and I hope that my colleagues will continue to work together to drive that DRIVE Act into law. West Virginians rely heavily, as most people around the country, on roads and bridges and highways to fuel our economy, to access hard to reach places in our states, to get to and from work and to transport goods and services. West Virginians understand the need for a long-term highway bill. Nearly one third of our state's major roads are currently in poor conditions. And the Federal Highway Administration has listed 960 West Virginia bridges as structurally deficient. We have quite a few bridges in our state because of our beautiful mountains. The DRIVE Act will increase funding for maintaining and repairing these bridges. The bill prioritized maintenance of our major roads, helping to address the current state of disrepair of our highways across this country. This is a statistic that was, I, quite frankly, I was rather jarred by the number. Each West Virginia motorist pays an average of $575 a year in extra maintenance costs due to the poor road conditions. This drive act will help our states address maintenance repair, meaning safer and less costly trips for our drivers. But the biggest thing is the certainty that comes from a long-term highway bill. It's important for not only the maintenance aspect, but it's most important to advance new projects. Large highway projects are expensive multi-year endeavors. States can't plan based on, on the future, based on funding commitments for a week or a month. And whether the issue is relieving congestion, improving access to rural communities, to fuel economic development, or moving freight across the country, the DRIVE Act will help the most important projects move forward. In West Virginia, US Route, 40, excuse me, US Route 35 in Putnam and Mason County is one of our most critical projects. It's an important freight link from the uh, goods moving from the southeast to the Midwest. But it's been two lane for a very long time. It was one of the most dangerous roads that interstate traffic, uh, truck traffic shared. Thanks in part to that 2005 bill I talked about, the majority of Route 35 is now a four-lane highway, and our state efforts to complete the remaining 14 miles are well underway. But the DRIVE Act will aid efforts to get that project across the finish line. It will also help us build Quarter H, coming through the middle of the state, central and eastern West Virginia, an important part of the Appalachian Development Highway System. When this road is complete, it will link counties in central West Virginia and with the Interstate I-81 corridor, improving safety and providing economic development opportunities for our communities. 
Whether it's Route 35, Quarter H, King Cole Highway, or Coalfields Expressway, or other high priority projects across our states, states need that certainty that's gonna come from a dedicated federal investment to move forward. And that's what a long-term highway bill does while creating jobs for our construction workers. According to the West Virginia Contractors Association, construction and employment in my state fell by 11.3% between November of 2013 and November of 2014. That's in one year. Passing a highway bill that supports investment in our roads and bridges will put these men and women back to work. Reauthorizing our highway program for six years would be reason enough, in my opinion, to strongly support the DRIVE Act. But I want to highlight another part of this bill that's important to my state. It reauthorizes the Appalachian Regional Commission through 2021. And West Virginia is the only state whose boundaries full fall fully entirely within the commission's boundaries. Earlier this year, the commission marked its 50th anniversary, a leading efforts to fight poverty and improve the quality of life in the Appalachian region. And over that period in the Appalachian region, poverty has been cut in half with the percent of residents over 25 with college degrees has nearly tripled. But there's much more work to be done. The DRIVE Act authorizes a broadband deployment initiative through the ARC to help increase access to high-speed internet, a problem in rural America, in support of distance learning, telemedicine, and business development. So reauthorizing this ARC and bringing broadband to small, economically depressed communities will help bring jobs to West Virginia. The ARC provides important support for healthcare, education, and infrastructure programs, and I am pleased that the DRIVE Act will allow the Commission to continue its efforts for the next six years. Now's the time to move our transportation system forward, meet the needs of our growing population, ensure safety for travelers, and promote growth in areas that struggle economically. The Senate has the opportunity to make a real and positive difference for all Americans by passing the DRIVE Act. And I ask my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to support this important legislation. Thank you.